Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. So today we will start building an astrophotography rig and I sit here on the floor because we start at the bottom, at the base, at the floor, whatever you call it. And we're gonna start with the tripod. It's highly important because it's gonna support everything above it. I mean, whether you plan to create a portal setup, a traveler rig for holidays or a permanent setup within a private observatory, everything starts with a fitting tripod. And as you can choose from different sizes, forms, materials, we need some sort of plan here, so let's just go from small to big. Okay, so let's look at this. This is a lightweight aluminum tripod for compact cameras. It's very light, it has a mount attached on the top, and it's foldable and easy to store or to transport. I mean, it can easily support a compact camera like this, it can easily support a DSLR, okay-ish, and it can even carry this binoculars of mine, but I'd say this is the upper limit. See how wobbly it is? Better have no wind or shaking or anything, but without, uh, barely okay. Whoa. But seriously, we want to talk about telescope tripods, so let's move on. So this here is a old tripod. It came with a cheap beginner setup, carrying a small Newtonian telescope. Wooden tripods are supposed to absorb vibrations and are generally lighter and less stable than their metal counterparts. Man, I mean, this tripod is so shaky. <laughs> okay, let's find something more robust. Today's tripods are normally made from metal, aluminium or steel, like this baby here. This little tripod here came with my old EQ3 Pro mount from Skywatcher. It has rectangular cross sections and those hinges here and there to adjust the height. The weight is roughly 5.6 kilograms. I mean, just like this, it's way more stable than the ancient wooden tripod. And on top here you can see the common mounting point for telescope mounts. This little metal nose here does control the azimuth adjustment, but more on that later. The tripod legs themselves are stable, but they need to be held in place with some kind of, I don't know, well, here it's a metal plate screwed onto the legs. And then this plate also serves as a fancy eyepiece holder. All in all, the tripod is relatively stable, it holds the mount and the telescope on top without being too shaky. I mean, uh, compare those two. <laughs> Definitely a difference, isn't it? But seriously, now let's go big. <sighs> okay, this beast here. <laughs> okay, this beast here is the tripod delivered with my EQ6R Pro mount. It is stainless steel, circular cross section, and like the predecessor with a standard thread for attaching a telescope mount on top. So I mean, this beast is very heavy just for itself, so consequently it can carry a lot of weight. On the other hand, of course, it's very stiff and not very flexible, so it cannot absorb vibrations as well as the wooden construction. But the trick is not to get shaken in the first place, mainly due to mass inertia. This steel tubeless tripod has a fixation system for the legs as well. Here you can screw this plate, right there, into the upper section and to the mount adapter, and this will hold the legs in place. Okay, I think let's put them in a row. Okay, tiny and lightweight on the one hand, perfect for traveling with a small camera, and very robust and massive on the other hand, perfect for carrying a massive mount and a huge telescope. And this is not the end, you can go further. This is the EQ8 tripod, like 30 kilograms only for the tripod. Or you invest in something like a pier, this is a concrete foundation, fixed in place, unshakable but only used inside an amateur observatory. Okay, let's have a closer look at the tripod and its parts. Okay, as mentioned, the legs of this beast are not flexible at all. They have little metal spikes at the bottom to grab a good hold. There are anti-vibration pads available. If you work on a wooden ground or patio or something like that, this can be a good idea. Down here are the hinges for altering the height of the individual legs. It's very important to keep the tripod leveled during your session. I don't need to level this, because I work on a perfectly flat surface. But if you are out in the fields, this is very important. 
This stabilization structure here holds the legs in place and most commonly the eyepieces too. It's different from tripod to tripod, but the basic idea is always the same. It firmly stretches the legs and so holds them in place tightly. Your future tripod should definitely have something like this. It's very handy. The mounting platform on the top will connect to the telescope mount. More on that in later videos. And this nose here. This will hold and support the azimuth adjustment, so left and right for your telescope mount. And the screw here will attach to the base of your mount. Not all tripods will work with every mount, so most of the time it's a good idea to buy them as a setup. Not so much the telescope on top, but at least the tripod and the mount combo. Okay, I know that every newcomer's thinking goes like that. What telescope am I going to buy? And I do understand that. I was at the same point a few years ago. But while considering the telescope, do give the mount and in the same instant the tripod a closer look too. The best telescope in the world won't give you anything if placed onto a shaky and wobbly foundation. I was in that position when I mounted a heavy Newtonian telescope onto a two-week EQ3 mount. Elongated stars, imperfect tracking, you really don't want that. And in the internet most stores can give you the specs of the tripod, its weight and the additional weight limit. But on the other hand, if you want to step outside and find dark locations every time you observe or image, you don't want to carry like 30 kilograms alone for the tripod. So I just encourage you to take the mount and the tripod into your calculations from the first moment on. Your telescope, and I mean the whole rig, will be a setup that only serves you well when the individual parts do match. I listed a few videos from different YouTube astronomers where they compare different setups. We do from Astroforum does a great comparison. Definitely check it out. Okay, okay. So you got yourself a tripod? Cool. Time to move on to the mount. Probably the most important piece of hardware you will need. But more on that on the next video. Okay, so you are new to this channel? Two things. First, this is the second chapter of our tutorial session. So definitely make sure to have a look at the first chapter, the theory chapter. And second thing, if you like this video and the idea behind an amateur astronomer tutorial channel covering things in order from A to Z, maybe consider hitting like and subscribe. Okay folks, and as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.